And welcome to an America East Cats Chat. I'm Andy Katz. Pleased to be joined by Ernie Duncan of Vermont after a great road win at Stony Brook. Uh, this came without Anthony Lamb, who had missed uh, now his second straight game with a concussion. We don't know his status yet for Saturday's game against UMass Lowell. But Ernie, you stepped out, stepped up, excuse me, uh, without Lamb. You had 25 points and a comeback win over Stony Brook. What did that tell you about this Catamount team? Yeah, it's a good uh, good performance by you know a good team effort by our young team and for us to be able to go to a you know a tough place to play at Stony Brook against a very good opponent and you know to pull out a win you know um, definitely a good good moment for us and um, obviously we need Anthony Lamb back and we can't wait to have him back. But how does the team change when he's not on the floor? Yeah, it's definitely different. You know, he's obviously the you know, well, he's our our best player and we feature him a lot. So it's um, you know we need our younger bigs kind of step up, which they did. And um, it becomes a little bit more of a guard-orientated team, you know, with me, Steph, Everett, Robin. Um, so it's definitely a, a different type of a, a different type of offense. What did, what did Coach Becker actually explicitly tell you you needed to do, especially in this game, without Lamb? Yeah, just, you know, kind of told everybody we need, obviously, to take another step up. And, um, you know, for me, you know, take a step up with my leadership and be even louder without Anthony. He's the other, kind of the other voice on the team. So, you know, so I took it as a challenge to kind of step up and you know help the help the guys you know lead them better and um, step up offensively and defensively. So, which I you know I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the run you guys went on was pretty remarkable. I don't know, thirty four uh, points during that run. Um, you know that stretch right there. You tell me because I'm not seeing you guys on a regular basis. I mean, how would you characterize about how well you guys played during that stretch? compared to other games, you know, how much was that maybe one of the best stretches of basketball, even without land that you guys have played? Yeah, it was a really um, impressive um, kind of stretch right there. I remember, you know, the timeout, Sonny Brook took a little bit of a lead and coach kind of got on to us, challenged us to step up, you know, physically on both ends of the floor. And after that, things kind of changed. Credit, credit to Coach Becker for kind of, you know, telling us to wake up a little bit. And, um, but yeah, definitely a really good stretch, especially defensively. I thought that kind of set the tone for offense. And, uh, yeah. Really good stretch by us. Yeah, 34 to 7. I just want to get those numbers out there. Pretty remarkable run. So you are one and two in America East Championship games. I know we're still a long way from them. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't understand from the player perspective, because I talked to coaches about this, when everything is on the line, you have no chance for an at large, and it's all coming down to that. And a lot of times, you know, a team like Vermont is favored to win it, and you don't. What's that locker room like? It's a, I mean, the whole week, you know, leading up to that championship game, even, you know, the quarterfinal, semifinal, it's a lot of pressure. You can kind of feel it sitting on you when you're just sitting at your house before you go to bed. Like, it's um, a lot of pressure. And then as you win that quarterfinal and semifinal, even more pressure. And the championship morning is – you don't sleep the night before. That's all you're thinking about is hopefully we can cut down nets. And um, it's a lot of pressure. Um, so, you know, it's it's a challenge to try to calm yourself down in the moment and just understand we're just playing basketball. And, you know, but it's hard to think that when so much is on the line. You know, that's a great point because I'm trying to think comparatively stressful situations, a big exam, a midterm, a final. I don't know if you can compare them because literally everything is on that. And if you get in, it just means so much to you, the staff, the school, the alums, everything on those 40 minutes. It's an unbelievably stressful situation. So to get there, to win this league, what's that? Your whole dream is kind of on the line. So I look at it like something that you've been you know looking forward to your whole life and it goes up to that 11 o'clock championship game so yeah it's it's a hard to hard to compare so to get there and you've already now won at stony brook but this league clearly is deeper than it's been in a while um uh, going forward what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge of being able to stay and regain and retain that number one seed over these next uh, four weeks yeah well this back half of the conference play is always the hardest one because you've already played everybody and everybody knows each other and even the teams right now, you know, at the, the bottom end of our conference are competing with the, the teams at the top, So, which is which makes it hard, you know, to, to go to, you know, Albany or go to those teams at the bottom. But um, it's going to keep improving. It's going to be even tougher the second time around. All right, so you have your two brothers on the team. Your sister also is a player, correct? Sister wasn't a player, no. Oh, oh she wasn't a player. I'm sorry. Um, but the three brothers are, um, and they're all on the same team. Uh, so, you know, how, how does it work in terms of I mean, jealousy or, you know, with playing time or anything like that? Uh, because you're obviously not going to be on the floor all the time at the same time. So 
Um, you know, how has that been able to, to sort of work with, especially you being there first? Yeah, I mean, there's no jealousy. There's no, it's all love between, you know, at this level. Maybe there was obviously jealousy growing up and you know, AAU ball or something like that. But at this level, no, we're just rooting for each other. And, you know, it's it's, it's a real pleasure to, ha- to be playing with two brothers. Now, you come from a basketball state. What's the, what's the word essentially about Vermont basketball back in uh, in Indiana? Yeah, I mean especially Evansville, you know where I'm from, and Everett, Robin, obviously too. But um, yeah, they love Vermont basketball, and pretty much nobody I, I think in, in Evansville knew about Vermont until I kind of got here, and then obviously everybody knows now in Evansville about Vermont basketball. But um, definitely, it's spreading down there, down in the Indiana region. Well, right now you guys are on a better roll than Indiana for the record. So <laughs> things are going better in Vermont than in Bloomington right now. Hey, Ernie, appreciate it. Thanks. Great game against Stony Brook. And I know we'll be talking soon. Thank you. Have a good one.